Hey sailors, welcome to the crew. I'm Sea Lord Janda, and this is my playthrough of Rule the Waves 3 as the United States. We've been steadily building up our navy so far, the year is now 1898, and our expansion has been unexpectedly interrupted by a war with Russia. We weren't especially prepared or intending on this, but we are certainly going to have a go at it now that it's broken out. Probably. Yep. Okay, it's September 1898. We are at war with Russia. So now we need to figure out what to do about that fact. Now our fleet... And we're so close to war with France still. The good news is our fleet is deployed out here. And apparently, despite well, that whole dockyard thing... Illinois is ready for action again. Maybe she had time to get repaired. I didn't check how many months it was. So we have two battleships, two armored cruisers, two protected cruisers, eight destroyers ready in the Pacific. Um, can I conquer this? Nope, beyond our invasion range. Okay. In that case, I'm just going to move all of it into Northeast Asia. And we can basically join up with Japan. Wait, didn't Russia have an alliance with somebody? No. Japan had an alliance with somebody. I think. Apparently not. If they did, it lapsed. Maybe I was wrong about that to start with. No, no, it's just Italy and France and Austria-Hungary and Russia. Oh, that's right! Yeah, Russia were allied to Austria-Hungary. Not that they would be a threat if they did declare war on us, but they don't seem at all inclined to declare war on us, so I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to move this whole fleet into Northeast Asia. Obviously, we can't fight the whole Russian fleet head-on, but... I mean, they've got nine battleships here. But we could reinforce the Japanese pretty nicely. And independent operations might work. Is there anywhere else Russia has bases that are actually practicable for us to attack? Not really. Seeing as I don't really expect... How good are Russia's light cruisers? They have a lot, but how good are they? Oh, those are armored cruisers. Well, they could use those too, but light cruisers, oh man. They have a lot of these that are 10 by 6, 8 by 2. Yeah, they have a lot that are just clones of ours. Oh well. We gotta take a little risk. I'm gonna dispatch Chicago and Columbia uh, to raiding duties. And... I even remembered without being prompted that we need to put these on trade protection. Is there anything else we imminently need to do? These guys are covering the west coast. These guys are covering the east coast. These are sort of scattered all around the Pacific and the Caribbean. That's fine. I don't really see Russia being on the west coast a lot, but I'm going to leave these guys here anyway. However, maybe... I mean, I don't think Russia can strike at our coast very effectively. I'm going to send Pueblo and Frederick to our west coast, and I'm just going to dispatch Pittsburgh straight across the sea to join our uh, join our squadron in Northeast Asia. There is one Cincinnati already, or uh, yeah, Cincinnati's already in Northeast Asia on foreign stations, which is fine. Okay, I think that's about all the moves we can realistically make. Did I, what did I just... Okay. It just depends how the battles get generated. Uh, we're not technically an ally of Japan, but I mean, we practically are for all intents and purposes. Uh, 
We have funds. Not that many, though. I'm gonna build another Arizona, because we definitely need more battleships in the long term. And then, um... Who's in charge of this battleship squadron? I see your average. Can I reassign this brilliant guy? I don't care. I think that did cost us prestige, but it's worth it. I'd rather have the brilliant guy in charge. Williams here is literally unknown. Oh, but it's the second armored cruiser division that's there, right? Yeah. Okay, I'd rather not take a chance on an unknown guy. I'm going to reassign this guy. That also cost a prestige. That's fine. There's nothing prestige really does except, like, sort of determines the ending in terms of what a ship can get named after you. And then, um... If it drops too low, you get fired. But, um... Other than that, it just kind of sits there, so... You might as well spend it. Great. Oh, well, that's why we're moving a squadron in. I mean, their fleet is much, much larger than ours, but... Uh, did I not order that whole fleet to move after all that talking? Wow, okay. Please go to Northeast Asia immediately. Thank you very much. Oh, great. All our destroyers can't actually make that move. I really need to get them there before the war, apparently. Oh, well. They're not that useful in this year, anyway. I completely forgot about that somehow. Well, at least they'll harass anything that attacks Northern Pacific. We can ambush an enemy for, like... How do we have one battleship? Was Illinois... Illinois should have been ready. I swear it said she was. It did. Hmm. But she's moving slower than Montana for some reason. Um... Okay. Well, it says due to an intelligence coup we can ambush an enemy force. Let's hope that's true and we don't just get annihilated here. Okay, that's a little... Oh. Okay, there's... Definitely that crashed a little. Sorry about that. We're just going to go ahead and relaunch very quickly. Okay, we're still at war with Russia. I don't know what all moves we might have neglected. Um, okay, some of our ships are moving slower than others for some reason, but I guess we... Okay. That month passed without a battle, according to canon. Uh, so much for our ambush. They have a lot of ships here, but they're very... I'm not terribly... Oh, look at that. Oh, no. Why would New York do this? Why wouldn't Memphis or something do this? We're just going to lose New York immediately. I should have pulled her out of this area. I didn't realize she was here on foreign stations, but this is just immediate. I mean, okay. 
I exact I don't exaggerate that much. This is a really bad cruiser. Most of their light or like protected cruisers will probably beat New York. But we'll see. Or we literally won't actually find... Oh, there we go. Okay, you'd better get up to maximum speed. We might need to run away immediately. Can we get some identification? Light cruiser. That's all right. Ten six-inch guns and eight two-inch guns. I don't think two 7-inch and 6 5-inch guns is better than 10 6-inch guns. And we're slower, too, aren't we? Yeah, easily. 4-inch belt, 2-inch deck. I mean, their armor is thinner, but that is literally about it. I think that we should probably be the ones running away from this battle. The New York class is that bad. We do have gunnery training... I'm going to try a little bit of fighting at long range where Let's see if I can see my data on our own guns. 4-inch belt is immune at pretty much anything beyond 3000 yards to our guns, so I would say if we can stay outside 2000 or so yards, we should have a good chance just because their armor is thinner than ours at least. Okay, we're immediately getting the range down. That's not that bad, actually. Don't close it too much more than this, though, if we can help it. We landed a hit. We're taking about three or four. How was the range? Okay, it's getting a little close, actually. We need to turn away a little bit, New York. Please. Oh, that was too much, but okay. House damage. Not bad. It's structural, which sounds bad, but it's much better than flotation. You'll notice the fact that they aren't running away, which means they also realize how bad the New York class is. They are a little bit now, though. We might have done enough damage to dissuade them. Yeah. I mean, if they do run now, we have no chance of catching them. Uh, we're at least four knots slower. I, we should have been able to make 18 knots. We might have taken engine damage. And yeah, it's 1898 accuracy. Better than 1890. Still bad. They're about to exit gun range. I, we have no hope of catching them. If this had been a Memphis-class armored cruiser or something, we would have taken this Vesta apart, probably. But, uh... I mean, with New York, honestly, I'm just glad that I think we've pretty much won this gun duel. At least they've taken enough damage that they want to run now. Uh, we haven't taken any significant damage, so I'll just chase them as long as I can, but we're not going to catch them before dark. Or ever. Since they're faster, <laughs> but... We can count this as a victory, at least. Small one, but a victory. New York intercepts a merchant raider and manages to not be sunk by the raider. We've lost another knot just to... Okay, yeah. She's gone. Back down to cruising speed. And just, I don't know, go in whatever direction you want. <laughs> Not exactly a major or a decisive battle, but um, at least we weren't the ones running away. Pretty much better than almost any battle of the Spanish-American War. Let's see here. Draw, it declares. We did get slightly more points, though, so it's lying a little bit. 
That was Svetlana. We pretty much dealt as much as we took. I mean, minor structural damage for minor structural damage, which, yeah, I... Now we're going to go ahead and immediately... Oh, excellent. Krupp armor. That is a considerable improvement of armor quality, yeah. Oh, the Japanese have lost the battleship Fuso in exchange for the armored cruiser Bogatir. Um... That sounds bad, you know, but I believe Fuso was, yeah, Fuso was 100% one of these 3,300-ton battleships, which probably means, okay, this is the Bogatir class, 6,800 tons. Weirdly enough, the Japanese pretty much won that battle, I would say. Um, the Russians have 13 armored cruisers in service. How many of them are good? Almost all. They do have two that are clones of my New York, a.k.a. terrible. The rest are all pretty decent, although... 2 8-inch, 10 6-inch, I mean, these... probably would lose a head-to-head -head fight with ours, so we have a good chance there. Our other ships are all moving. Okay, New York, I need you to leave... Okay, well, you're repairing damage, but don't let me forget to move her next turn. We have to pause a battleship immediately, unfortunately. Six are required now. Okay, well, we're going to have to just build another... Uh, which ones did we build? Steady. These exist for the sole purpose of trade protection, so not really. I mean, we'll redesign them at some point, probably, but... Not, I'm not worried about it. Actually, why am I even building one? Can I just put one of these short-range destroyers on trade protection? Is that valid? For those purposes, yes. Okay. I changed my mind. Scrap that ship entirely. Cruiser action. Well, as long as we're not terribly outnumbered, that sounds like a fine enough idea to me. On, like, okay, we're very close to a Russian port, I see. I don't like that that much, but, uh... We've got a good little... I mean, this is all the cruisers we have in the area. What's this here? Oh. Okay. Not only do we have... Our whole fleet is here, actually. Uh, it's done this thing that it sometimes does, where we have the battleships in the area, but not under our direct control. But I don't know how we're operating here. I'm just going to assume that we have a, like secret alliance or something with Japan, although why it would be secret when we're both openly at war with Russia, I don't know, but deal with it. Okay. We have two very nice new armored cruisers, one Memphis class, one Pittsburgh class, and two very nice light cruisers, or protected cruisers, so... If they only have four to five cruisers, our chances of winning this battle are actually pretty high. Now, if they've got, like, eight, then we're going to need to retreat onto our battleships. Okay, I count six so far. I, okay, I count eight already. So we're probably going to need to fall back on our battleships, but... Uh, we'll see. I mean, maybe I just... I'll. I don't think they're actually going to rate... Oh my good god. Are those all cruisers? I might have said battleships a minute ago. That was a lie, but... Are those all cruisers? Because... Holy cow. No, a lot of them are destroyers. Still... I don't know that we can fight that force. Okay, is this what's actually cruisers? Probably these are all destroyers. That's still about... Six... Seven cruisers, something like that. It's a lot. But we're only 20, 30 nautical miles from our battleships, so we'll exchange a little bit of fire with them. Especially if they approach at this angle, where we should have a pretty good bead on their lead ships. 
What's torpedo range like? Okay, it's really short, so... But don't want to get close to all those destroyers by any means. I mean, here we have... Okay, this is a very... Very, very weak light cruiser here. Very small. Very lightly armed. That's almost an irrelevance. It's like an... In the late game, this would be a destroyer. Literally. Um, well, except it's too slow. These are pretty nice. This is lighter than our armored cruisers, but not bad at all. Uh, this is not nice. This is a New York clone. I would no, it's faster though, at least allegedly, but it's not well armed. This is not terrible, but definitely not as good as our light cruisers. I mean. Right, we have a qualitative advantage here, I would say, for sure. Just They have a big numerical advantage. Apparently we're at less than 50% fuel, probably because we're so damn far away from our bases. Okay, we're pulling ahead of them, which is... Oh, for a waterline hit? I mean, okay. It's not exactly crippling, but the problem is it could cause her to lose speed, which would then cause all sorts of issues, but... Uh, we're going to close the range a little. If we get lucky and cause significant damage to one or two of them, that could be big. As long as we don't get in torpedo range, I'm not too afraid of getting a crippling hit dealt to us. Although we are actually alarmingly close to torpedo range now. Okay, I need these to swing back south a little to cover our... light cruisers, which are going to... This is a sort of a complicated maneuver, but I just needed to get more distance between us, because we're faster than them is the issue here. Also, we all really suck at gunnery. I don't think that it's optimal to have our light cruisers being a bullet shield for our armored cruisers right now. But it's not that bad, because nobody's hitting anything. Okay, some good hits on those Varyongs there. Alright, I can see our light cruisers are currently going through our armored cruisers. That's probably a problem. How far away are we getting from our battleships? A lot further, but... It's going well so far, so... I mean, nobody has any... significant damage at all, I don't think. I don't think we've dealt any, but... Uh, as long as we're not taking any significant hits, we might as well continue engaging, I would say. Maybe turn and try to cross their T a little. The only thing is we can't get in range. If we get in range of those destroyers, we could be done real fast, but... Uh... That's a little sketchy. Oh, that's really sketchy. Okay. Turn away, please. You guys should be out of range. Oh! Huh. As long as we don't get hit by a torpedo, I think we just wrecked that destroyer, because she just stopped dead in the water. I didn't quite see uh, the log doesn't really go back uh, until we can look at it after the battle, but we probably hit her with a six inch shell or something. She looks pretty dead. I think we would have gotten a message by now if we'd been hit by a torpedo, so that should be fine. That destroyer is on fire. I think it's going to sink. Oh, this is a carbon copy of Artisters, except I think it's faster. I don't know why. Maybe they've just got better tech. How do the Russians have better tech? In any case, that's a kill. I don't think we've done significant damage to these Varyogs, but I'm pretty sure we've dealt more than we've taken. I wish that our late cruisers would not be taking the brunt of the damage from them, but Protected cruisers, I'm sorry about that. I, I get armored cruisers right pretty much every time. I don't know why I get protected cruisers wrong so often. Okay, getting a little close to those destroyers again.
lot of fire being exchanged. We've finally gotten close enough to actually hit people. Oh, great. Pittsburgh's taking a critical hit to the engine room. It's not, well, like, flotation-wise, it's not prob problematic, but uh, speed-wise, it might be. We definitely can't afford for her to get slowed down badly. Another one? Oh, God. Okay, the good news is their destroyers have kind of scattered. So... What on earth? I mean, okay, we landed two hits, but that's five hits they land that tick. That's a little better. Don't love all this alleged engine room damage we're taking. Pittsburgh has definitely slowed down very badly. That's a problem. This Varyag is also slowed down for sure, but that's... Okay, Salt Lake City, I need you to not leave Pittsburgh behind too much, please. Good, that's an 8-inch hit on that Varyag. That's another 8-inch hit from Pittsburgh, actually, but... Uh, this is not... I mean... The armor and damage control on these ships is not that good. Now, the only issue is we have to be within about <laughs> 3,000 yards for even an 8-inch gun to penetrate 4 inches of armor, which we're barely, but it should be doing something. Good news is our light cruisers are pretty much all good. Salt Lake City is pretty much all good. The only one that's taken significant damage is Pittsburgh, and it's not crippling. She just has taken a bunch of engine room shots for some RNG reason. How far are we from the... Okay, we are 60 nautical miles from the battleships, but we're headed almost dead in their direction, and the Russian fleet is doing something just horribly chaotic right now. We're really only engaged with this one... I mean, most of them are in our range, but only this one Varyag is just taking the whole brunt of our fire right now, which is fine, because concentrating all our fire like that is how we actually sink something. Okay, it's broken off. Um, as long as the Salt Lake City is not taking any sh hits, we might as well continue firing. We're almost running circles around them because of this mess that they've become. They've totally lost their formation, which does seem like a very Russian thing to do, but to be fair, the AI... Oh, there's, cor there's Corvettes in here? Oh, man. No wonder they have... They have so many ships because they've just thrown everything they've got into this. Like, just an absolute mess of old and bad and not even really combat-worthy ships. I think they're running. I mean, ideally they'd be running towards our battleships, but they're not really, but... The range is getting so... Pittsburgh's on fire? Oh, hell. Okay, well, it's not a lot of fire. In fact, I didn't really know she was... No, oh, fire started by that. All right, we need to not be on fire real fast, though. Um... Hmm. I'm going to have all these cut back across this flank of the Russians. Pittsburgh can hopefully... F okay, fire extinguished. That's a relief. I have seen fires just burn ships down to the waterline and sink them in, in previous iterations of this game, so... Especially in the early game when damage control is really bad, so... I mean, these ships are probably still, you know, got all kinds of fancy wood decoration and paint on them. That lesson wasn't really learned until after the... Probably not until after the Russo-Japanese War, honestly.
Okay, the range has become too long for us to really engage them effectively, but it's going to be hard to get Pittsburgh into firing range, and if she's not in firing range, then I'm afraid to engage much of anything. You know what we can do, because visibility is pretty good? We can split up a little. Nah, well, I was going to try to... What the hell is this? It's just a ball of, like, they're, they're doing that thing bees do, except they're not actually around my ships. They're just like, oh shit, they just formed a line all of a sudden. <laughs> Let's break off from that sudden, actually, combat effective force. I want to be very... Like, we can't really afford to... If we traded... Well, no. I don't really want to trade this armored cruiser for any one... Either of our armored cruisers for any one of theirs. Two, maybe. One, no. Let's try to keep Pittsburgh at a good range from them. Salt Lake City can do the heroics. Cut straight across their bows. What's the time? Okay, it's pretty... It's December, though. It might actually be dark kind of soon. I'll check after we've completed this insane high-speed pass right next to the Russian fleet with our light cruisers. That's safe. We're winning, by the way. Like, we're just hammering them. That Varyag is on fire and badly damaged. Um... Baltimore and Raleigh are single-handedly winning the war with this firing pass against about four armored cruisers right now. That we're about to crash into a Varyag. That's acceptable. Lost a turret. And here comes Salt Lake City and Pittsburgh steaming into the rescue. Everybody turn, form an actual line, face north. I can't t I think that one's on fire. Yeah. We should probably prioritize going after that one. I mean, I will, if, if I can. It's just going to be hard to get in there and after her with all these... I'm still very weary of these destroyers. I mean, torpedoes are very bad in 1898, but torpedo defenses are non-existent. If we get hit by one, somewhat unlikely, but if we do, we're pretty much just dead. So... How's one Varyag versus two of... Honestly, put 10 heavy and 12 three-inch. Yeah, two of our light cruisers should be able to handle one Varyag. Pittsburgh has rejoined, but she can't actually keep up. So she's just lagging behind again immediately. Now, this Varyag put out the fire. Okay, sinking. I don't think I actually believe that, because she's doing 15 knots, which is not the mark of a ship that's sinking. But, uh, she's taking some damage. So, oh, we're launching torpedoes. Oh, god damn. Uh, that's gonna miss. But good effort. Okay, Raleigh's launching torpedoes. I hope they don't have torpedoes. Jesus. That might hit. That might hit. Oh, passed under or something. Well, could have been worse. They could have hit us. <laughs> Somehow I forgot about the cruiser-mounted torpedoes for a moment. Whoops, we can't do... I know we can't do 20 knots. Go back down to the 15 or something. We're going to run out of ammo well before we sink all their ships. Like, not that we have a real chance of sinking all their ships, but we're going to run out of ammo probably before we see any one of them actually sink. I can only hope that that one... that. You think this... I think that maybe is the one we hit a lot? Thing is, they're not... They're only 50. They're closer to their ports than we are to our battleships at this point. Okay, night is approaching fast. That's probably going to be when we're going to have to disengage. As long as we haven't lost anything, this will be a clear win at that point. Just, uh... Don't lose anything. And also, I'm not really sure they've taken... Oh, it's raining. Well, that'll kind of... 
we're it's not that bad visibility wise that it's going to be a crisis just because it's raining, but it's not great. However, much more than anything we had in the Spanish American War, this battle should be unless something disastrous happens in the last couple of maneuvers here, this battle should be a pretty unqualified win for us. Not a decisive win, but a win. We might even actually have sunk an armored cruiser or something. I'm not convinced we really have, but maybe. I'm sure we sunk one of those destroyers earlier, but that doesn't really count for much. Although they're probably all short-ranged in this year, which means if we sunk one, that's one that they're just not going to be able to replace in the Far East for the duration of the war. But they've got about 20 here or something, so... But Varyag is badly damaged, for sure. The fact that she's lost so much speed definitely means she's really badly damaged, but... Uh... Oh, it's stopped raining. That's something. Okay. There's not really anything effectively guarding that ship, so we're going to try to close in and pour on some more fire. I mean, this destroyer line, but it's... Torpedo range is, like... They're on the wrong side. I mean, that's the opposite of a good screen. Baltimore lost a turret. Lost two more turrets. What on earth? Okay. This Varyag has the most accurate gunners 1898 has ever known. There we go. Okay, two-inch gun hits, but still something. Yeah, we're landing some, landing some hits on her now. This one is badly damaged. It really is because of the speed it's making. Oh, great. Losing light. Just at the wrong moment. But visibility is just good enough that we still are in contact with her, which means maybe... We've just, we can, we've got a chance of just finishing her off in the dark here. As long as we don't go blundering into that destroyer line, which is a risk. Because there it is right there. Probably was not in torpedo range, and... Torpedoes suck at this year, but, um... See, we've definitely done a lot of damage. I'm not convinced we've sunk this armored cruiser yet. Not at all convinced. Their port is not that far away. The weather is not great, but not terrible. Ah, great. Okay, yeah, it's so dark now, though. We're gonna try to stay in contact with her as long as we can, though. The Russian fleet will probably be losing contact with each other very badly, although I'm not quite sure how the AI handles that. Okay, can you guys maybe, um, I think that should make them turn, but no, they're just going to sail that way. All right. Could we maybe ID that ship? No? Okay. I know she's not faster than us at this point, so... We're pretty much going to keep trying. If we get up right beside her, I'll just slow down and we'll really go for it. Hammer and tongs. Because at this point, I'm pretty confident we should win that. Oh, here come our light cruisers back. That's good. Uh, protected cruisers, yes. Oh man, where'd you go? Pulled a fast one on us there, maybe. Aha! Cheeky, but uh, we're coming up on her now. I'm going to lower speed right down to like 12 knots just so we hopefully pull up alongside. Visibility or accuracy, of course, is just horrifyingly bad in the dark, but uh, I think she's alone now. I haven't seen any trace of any other ship. I think the rest of them lost contact with her in the dark, so hopefully... Hmm. 
we can just sort of hunt her down and finish her off here. Yeah, it's not a battleship, but that's just uh, another example of how the identification system doesn't... Okay, she's dead. She's got to be dead now. She's dead in the water. As long as we don't get nailed by a torpedo in the next two seconds. Let's do one little more bow crossing for the stationary ship. A little cruel, but sometimes they're not actually sinking. So let's be sure of it, eh? All right. I'm pretty certain. I'm pretty certain that's an armored cruiser down. It's not a bad armored cruiser. I mean, out of the whole... Russia's got 13 armored cruisers in service. There's only one class that's bigger than the Varyogs, which is the Bogatirs, which are also newer. Uh, but this is a pretty nice... I mean, their newest ones are kind of later armored cruisers, so this is, uh, you know, probably in the top half of their armored cruiser force. All right, let's pull away and go, uh, I guess, that way, because that's where our battleships are, apparently just ramming themselves into the coast or something. That's been a very good result, though. I th oh, what's this now? Hold on. We've stumbled across a random... Oh, that's definitely a destroyer column. I don't want to fight them in the dark. At all. Oh, my God. I can just pretty much only hope that we didn't... It only takes a couple of ticks for torpedoes to run. I don't think we got hit by any. I mean, we definitely didn't get hit by any. I think we're clear. I'm pretty certain that was a column of destroyers. We just got lucky they didn't hit us. Okay, uh, Pittsburgh can clearly not do more than 10 knots. Can we slow down for her? And at this point, we just wait for the battle to fish in the end, which it should. Yeah, any second. Oh, yes. Okay. That is a big victory now. Big victory. We sank not only that destroyer, which I knew, and not only the armored cruiser that I knew about, but we 100% sank a second armored cruiser. And we only took... I mean, we took some damage, but not... Uh, let's go through this quick. Uh, not the small damages that we dealt to all their other ships, but at least the heavy damages and what we took. Raleigh was hit uh, 16 times, which actually did amount to quite... Uh, that's much more damage than I realized she'd taken in the end. I would have been more careful with her, probably, but I'm guessing that was in some of the late passes. Like that suicide run she conducted at one point, maybe? But she came through all right. I mean, not sunk. Should be all right soon. Pittsburgh, yeah, this is about what I figured. This is not uh, really too bad. I mean, she's a sturdy ship. For being in heavy battle for a period of, what is this, like... We're scoring tertiary hits as late as then, I mean... Probably seven hours, six, seven hours of battle. Not that bad at all. Uh, Salt Lake City. I would say it's less damaged, but it must have been in more critical locations or something. I don't know why she's classed it. Oh, maybe it's just because she's more expensive. Yeah. Any bit of damage counts more on her. Baltimore. Ooh, that is a lot of flotation damage to Baltimore in the end. But she didn't sink. We dealt a pretty good amount of damage to this other Varyag. Um, 
nothing crippling. I'm not really clear on when. It was just during the fight. And we knocked both of her 8-inch turrets out, so that's pretty good. And then the ships we actually sent... Well, okay, this destroyer, as I thought, took one 6-inch... No. Took one 6-inch shell to the engine room from Raleigh, and that same tick immediately began sinking and was probably, given we stopped shooting at her, was probably gone within about five minutes. That's She's a 300-ton ship. She can't take any amount of damage, really. Now, oof. I wonder if this is the one we were shooting at for a very long time, because that is a lot, a lot of hits that we landed on the armored cruiser Bayon. As you can see, she has, well, she actually has one turret still running, but all her torpedo, oh. I guess we didn't have to worry about her torpedoing us, because apparently we destroyed all torpedo mounts by the end, along with one of the turrets. Um, we just, I mean, there's nothing, you know, terribly exciting here. We just absolutely pummeled her in the end. That's very late. I think she was the one we were shooting at for a very long time. I think this is going to say, there we are. Yeah. Yeah. Our last pass was definitely superfluous. She was sinking about 20 or 30 hits before we actually left. Oh, well. And then this one, oh yeah, this one got hit a lot less, but, uh, interesting. Didn't take max flotation damage, but did take max, ah! See, this is exactly what I was worried about with Pittsburgh. So this must have been the one that was on fire. Um, this is exactly what I was worried about with Pittsburgh, in that she took, I mean, a pretty significant number of hits, to be sure. Uh, but was caught fire by splinters perforating, no, that's not where the fighter started. Fire. Her engines were giving trouble before she even engaged in battle. That sounds Russian. Fire spreads. Maybe this is where... The, I mean, this is usually where the fire starts. I don't see any messages about it before that. It doesn't actually say fire started. Maybe I'm missing it somewhere else in here. Anyway, fire was started, and after she disengaged, I mean, she had, of course, a lot of damage uh, flotation-wise as well. Structural damage wouldn't have been this bad because the fire made it worse, but she just, over the next, you know, three hours after she stopped engaging us, just slowly burned to the waterline and had to be abandoned. So the net result is we've sunk the destroyer Vesely and the armored cruisers Bayam and Gromoboy, which are both Varyag class, which are pretty nice. Uh, we've heavily damaged another Varyag class cruiser, and I mean, we got shot up, but not in like a crippling way. We wouldn't want to go straight into another battle for sure, but that's a significant victory. Thanks for watching, sailors. I hope you enjoyed the video. New parts should be up daily, or you can watch live on Twitch. If you did enjoy the video, consider leaving a like or subscribing. This is Sea Lord Janda signing off.